working with methods actually working with methods is not a new topic for us and we have seen this in language basics where we have learned how to write methods how to call methods how we can do method overloading optional parameter named arguments params keyword all these things we have actually learned everything in language basics itself in this particular chapter i am going to show you how working with methods basically more importantly in classes when you are writing a method inside a class you have to take care of certain precautions so what precautions we have to take care of while writing a method inside the class what is the best way of coming to a conclusion that this is the right option available is what we are going to focus upon of course again with the same example of account so i'll open the same project what we left with in the last session so here we had this constructor destructor let me delete this i don't need this anymore that was only used to demonstrate that the object is being created and the object is being destroyed now let us again focus upon account class now start thinking like when you want to write account class what kind of functionality can you associate with it right now we have got in context of account class id name balance which are field members and that is only going to hold data now we are moving towards implementation of encapsulation wherein both binding of data and behavior is going to happen within the class itself that means now i have to think of writing a method inside the class which is going to probably make use of the data which is associated with an object so what can be the behavior of account class yes the very first thing which comes into my mind is the methods like deposit and withdraw these are the actions these are the operations this is the functionality which one would provide in context of account class like in context of a trainer teaching basically faculty class if you are writing teaching would be the functionality so like that in context of account i am thinking of deposit as the first method i want to add now let's attempt to add a deposit method so should it be public yes i want the method to be accessible outside the class so it should be public then here we have to provide return type we'll do that the name of the method is deposit now question arises what should be the parameters and what should be the return type now when i ask this question to most of the students the input i get the common inputs i get is please provide id of the account in which we have to deposit then we have to add some amount to the balance of the account so please okay. provide decimal balance also as yeah, input yeah, so i'll write here balance i'm just taking yeah. inputs what generally people give as and i know this is wrong yeah. and then of course the amount which has to be deposited say amount and then i ask them what could be the return type they say after depositing the new balance so hence i may mention here decimal as the return type so this is the recommendation which comes from most of the freshers who are entering into object orientation but there is something wrong about it now what is wrong let us try to understand so imagine now i have an account class like this an object is created and i have also set some data with it so obviously now the data is associated a a1 and 10000 with an account object now if i have to call deposit method on the account object the fact is very clear deposit being a instance member in the account class unless i have an object of that class i cannot call the method every member of an account class is accessible only through an object of account class so now do i have an object yes and that is a which is the reference to an account class object so i would write here a dot deposit with parameters now as per this signature i want to provide parameters so what is expected here now deposit id so let's say one which is the id already same thing i am giving it here comma balance 10000 comma the amount to be deposited let's say i want to deposit 1000 rupees as the new deposit and this data we said is going to return new balance so in such case i should write here a dot balance is equal to so if this is how the method is supposed to be this is how we have to call it from some other place where we are creating account class now what is wrong about it let us take it very practically i an object of type faculty my subject is ms.net my name is sandeep 
Now, will you tell Sandeep dot teach MS dot net to me? Will you ask me to teach MS dot net? Or you will simply ask me to teach and automatically expect me to teach MS dot net only? I again repeat, I am an object of type faculty. My one of the property is subject and the value of that subject is ms.net. That means I already have some data that is ms.net. Now when others are asking me to teach, obviously what I am going to teach is ms.net. Somebody doesn't have to say sandeep.teach ms.net. I am not interested in that input because I will take my subject and teach. I will not take your request of subject which can be other than what is my subject. So basically what I am trying to say is when the object already has some data associated with it, do not pass to that object any additional information which is not required. For example, here object already has ID name balance. Then why should I again pass to an object the ID and the bal balance? It is unnecessary data. Object already has ID name balance, hence the deposit method will automatically have access to this ID name balance members of the account class. There is absolutely no sense in again giving these as parameters. But is amount required? Yes, amount is required because that is the amount which we want to deposit into the account. And at the same time, there is no sense in mentioning here return type as decimal because the balance will be there in the object after deposit. So preferably I'll give return type as void. Basically, in short, what I'm trying to tell you is whenever we write a method inside the class, do not provide to the method any member of the same class as parameter. When I write deposit method in account class, I will not provide ID name balance which are members of the class as parameters because that data is already accessible to the object on which we are invoking this method. This is very important point you have to keep in mind. So now what could be the implementation? Now somebody is calling deposit method on an object. Now inside the account class, can I get the reference to that object on which it is called? Now that object which somebody is calling might be referenced by A, might be referenced by A1, might be referenced by A2, might be referenced by any name. We don't know what is the name of that object. So can I say in the requirement of mine, as the implementation is happening, I want to deposit the amount specified to the deposit method as parameter in the balance of the current object in which it is invoked, current object, basically that is what we access using this. So current object, what is this? This is reference to current object. Inside method I cannot use A, inside method I cannot use A1, there is no A1, A declared here at all. So how do I get the reference to the current object? To get the reference to the current object, we use this. This is current object balance has to be incremented by the factor given in amount. That's all. Over. This is how deposit would be implemented. So, whenever you are accessing a deposit method outside the class, now you can make it simplified like this. You just say a dot deposit. No need to worry about new balance. After deposit, yes, if you try to access console dot write line or message box whatever, a dot balance, obviously you are going to get the latest balance. Because here what happened? On A, we invoked deposit method. So the deposit method is going to be invoked on an object of account to which 1000 is being passed as the parameter and in that method, balance is incremented by 1000 and that balance we will automatically get printed here as whatever we have given here, let's say 10,000. So it will become here. 11,000. Output will come as 11,000. So again I repeat, the point is, when you are writing a method inside a class, by mistake also, do not even think of giving these values as parameters to the method. Why? That data is already available to the object. How? Using this. Now this is optional. You need not write actually. It is understood. When you do not have this, it is automatically understood to be current object balance. 
but i highly recommend you to write this at this point of time get used to writing this for some time after some time you will automatically drop it this why because this brings more readability now how do you how do you read this method when we add when we call deposit method on an account object with some amount in the balance of that object in the balance of current object that amount is added do we need to change name and id absolutely not nothing has to be done the object will remain as it is only the balance aspect of that has changed through amount and this is what i have explained in the notes also first point the instance method of a class is always invoked only using a reference to an object thus it has to access all the data which is encapsulated by an object of that class right it has access to all the data why because that is invoked on a instance method second the method requires parameters only if for the data which it doesn't have direct access to but it is needed for implementation of the logic in our case amount is needed because amount direct access is not there thus while writing a method in class if the data is already the data member in the same class do not set to it any data either as parameter or return type do not use parameter return type for the members inside a method this is reference to the current object on which the method is invoked now this part is important if a parameter or local variable and a data member of the class has same name the local variable takes the precedence over data member and if the data member has to be accessed then this should be used explicitly what does it mean basically by any chance imagine just for demo i am writing imagine here i have string name as parameter now if i write here name is equal to something which name is changing is this name changing or is this name changing see both are same case so this local variable takes precedence over this so which name is changing now we are changing this name but if you want to change the member name then it becomes compulsory to resolve ambiguity now we are resolving we are saying now this dot name that means this is member name this not the parameter name this so there is a difference now obviously this problem comes only if the parameter name and the member name match if the parameter name member name don't match then automatically when you don't write this it implies member so otherwise this is optional but i am recommending you use name use this as much as possible in the initial stages of your career in object orientation brings more clarity in your code now let's write the second method withdraw now for withdraw i would like to put a condition i would like to put a business rule withdraw what to withdraw again some amount only should be withdrawn so i write here amount now the condition is if the balance after withdrawing is going to less than 500 it should not allow that means minimum balance in an account should be always 500 that is the restriction i want to put it now how will you do this so before you withdraw you will check if the current balance this dot current object's balance minus the amount which we want to withdraw if it is greater than or let's say if it is less than 500 it violates my rule so what to do we have to do something here else of course it is simple we want to simply write this dot balance minus equal to amount but point is what should we do here no lot of recommendations come one can be something like put message box insufficient funds now this is wrong according to me if you put message box here are we not restricting this class only to the windows environment what tomorrow if i want to use this class in a console based application so is message box right in console based application in console based application it has to be console dot write line it cannot be message box so what is more appropriate now is it message box appropriate or is it console dot write line appropriate i would say neither of them is appropriate then what is the right thing to do see actually speaking when we are having something like this situation is it a violation of the rule of the business 
So in these kind of situations, the recommended solution is throw a runtime exception. And syntax for throwing runtime exception is throw new application exception and some string as parameter. That's all. Of course, exception handling is a vast topic. We are going to cover later in depth. But right now, what I'm trying to teach here is in a method, if any kind of business rule is being violated, the right thing an object oriented method can do is throw a runtime exception and let the user who is calling the method decide what to do with that exception. Now, if it is a Windows application, they will catch the exception and display message box. If it is a console application, they will catch the ex exception and display console.write line. But our code here is completely independent of the console.write line or message box. We can use it anywhere, this particular kind of method. So I repeat, whenever any business rule of an object or the integrity of an object is violated through a property or method, it should be responded by throwing a runtime exception. It is very important. And one more thing, the class should always be programmed in such a way that it is not specific to any particular type of application. It should be usable in Windows application, console application, class library, services, anywhere I should be able to make use of the class. So the same class can be reused in different applications or environment. Don't use things like message box, console.write line, button, label, text box, such stuff you should not write in the custom classes which we are making use of. Those should be restricted to only using in the UI. So this is how you have to take care of few points when you are writing methods inside a class. One. Do not pass to the method anything which is already a member of the same class or same thing with the return type. This is reference to the current object. On that object, we are performing the operations. Do not use the reference as in client. They might call it as A, A, B, C something, but here it should be this. And whenever the rule of the business is violated, integrity of the object is being violated, the ideal thing to do is respond it by throwing a runtime exception. So these are the things. Now, we, now that we have written deposit method and withdraw method, we want to test it whether these are working properly or not. For this, let us go back to our GUI and make the changes here. I now add two more buttons. We can as usual copy this, control C, control V, control C, control V. So one is deposit, the other is withdraw. And I'll take copy of text box for the amount which I want to deposit or withdraw. So this, let us name them now properly. Go to properties. Right now we are in events tab. Change to properties. BTN deposit. And then text property should be changed to deposit. This withdraw BTN withdraw and come here call this as TXT amount to be deposited or withdraw. Now double click on this. Again, double click on this. Now, where to deposit? We already have an account object created and we are using it in all other method referenced by A. And let's use the same name while deposit also. So here we will call it as A dot deposit decimal amount. Where are we taking the amount from? Text box. Text box will give us text property. So what to do? Decimal dot parse txt amount dot text. Remember it is not txt balance. It is txt amount. And likewise here, a dot withdraw decimal dot parse txt amount dot text. Now run this. So we have id name 
balance i create the account object i set the data i clear i get good enough now i want to deposit 1000 deposit did it deposit yes but why is it not reflected here actually the change has happened in memory to get that change reflected on the gui we have to get the latest data from memory and that we have done here again deposit get again deposit get now withdraw get withdraw get withdraw get now withdraw continuously for some time now left with 2000 can you withdraw 1000 now can you withdraw for the 1000 not allowed why not allowed simple reason fund insufficient funds continue still you will see get will get you 1000 only now withdraw 500 this will be allowed now withdraw 1 rupee not allowed withdraw 0.1 not allowed strict rule anything not allowed balance will remain 500 only so deposit withdraw are the methods which we are invoking on an account object so these are the small things nothing new in terms of syntax in this particular chapter except with one keyword that is this which we have introduced here to refer to the current object data in the method implementation rest all we have covered method overloading you can always overload deposit method if you want you can always overload withdraw method optional parameters you can provide while calling you can give named argument all those concepts of working with methods still remain as it is only thing new to learn for you is these points and again continuing with this same example is here step 8 perform this withdraw method deposit method and same is given in vb.net for your reference this is the ninth step where you have to add deposit button withdraw button amount text box and then write the code and test it same code in vb.net so till here we are now good at implementation of encapsulation to an extent of course encapsulation is not complete yet but we are now able to successfully bind data and behavior together in one place so this is basically the entry point for implementation of encapsulation right now we do not have anything private right and complete encapsulation will happen when certain things are private and certain things are public right now everything is public so as we move forward we will see what all things we can make it as private and what all things we can keep it public and do data abstraction implementation abstraction now anybody who is making use of account class they don't have to worry about the implementation of deposit and withdraw the implementation details are completely hidden away from them tomorrow if i have to change any kind of business logic i'll change here now if i want to change from 500 to 1000 i'll change here automatically that will be reflected in the form they don't have to make any changes my business changes my rules changes they will be changing here this is also one of the advantage of encapsulating methods inside the class that's all in this video thank you